All right, welcome back to the channel. If you've been following my content, I've been testing Apple M1 software throughout the years along with other technology and laptop gizmos. So with the new M1 Max and M1 Pros out, um, there's been a lot of requests from my followers, subscribers, and people commenting to test out real world stuff. And a lot of that stuff has involved games, but with other render tests besides video editing, there's been requests to do Blender. So in my noviceness, I inappropriately tested them. The first test was a CPU versus CPU test with viewport test. And now to really stress test the different computers, what we're going to be testing is the physics simulation demos that you could get online. So there is no GPU acceleration in either Windows or Mac OS. And with that being said, this really just stress tests the 10 core GPU. So those unfamiliar with the differences in GPU, the M1 Pro actually has an eight core version and then also a 10 core version. But when you go to the 16 inch, there is no way to actually have an eight core GPU as it's not available in the options. So really this is just gonna be testing kind of the marginal difference between eight core and 10 core if you're still deciding between M1s and the eight core AMD 5900HS. So I'm not a blender expert or use this for my day to day, but I did spend some time researching how to get things set up. And from this perspective, what we're going to do, if you are familiar with fluid and render tests is everything is going to be set using the APIC, which is the standard that comes when you load this file. And then what's going to happen is that it has a hundred render visualizations. So that's what we're going to be using. And also in the background, we have the OBS methodology with the AMD using the Nvidia card and the M1 using the OBS. Both are set at 1080p and 60 frames per second. Finally, to wrap up the methodology, the count of the render times and the calculations, which just uses CPU for both devices, is used with DaVinci Resolve using the time code and sped up 4x. Lastly, I used the frame, the single frame, to stop the counter when, as soon as the render will reach 100%, that's when I stopped the timing. So without further ado, in this long intro pre-ramble, let's take a look at what the results were. So the interest in not making me bored, I just went ahead and transitioned, skipped to in the time code in post when these got close to wrapping up. And pretty impressively, the M1 Mac renders at eight minutes, 23 seconds, while the AMD is not close behind kind of around, let's see if I can do quick math here, 27 seconds later. Um, so not too much of a difference, one being 10 core, one being eight core, um, but impressive nonetheless that if you saw any of my other videos or even another video where someone posted online doing the CPU versus CPU test, you can actually hear how the uh, fans turn on. So I'll leave a link below for that video. And um, yeah, definitely from a cool perspective, uh, like temperature wise, um, you know, from my one week experience, I've barely heard the fans turn on, only when kind of doing virtualization or stuff of that nature. So definitely uh, a nice win for the Apple uh, M1 Max. So zooming in here, we have the M1, which has the viewport playback of the fluid simulation at 12 frames per second. So it looks pretty smooth, even from the OBS playback and recording. Um, but if we take a look when we go over to the AMD one, we'll see some uh, weird choppiness. This is not an encoding issue. You can clearly see that the FPS frame rate is just not um, as capable. And for the people who are always questioning, um, I have the G15 set at high performance using NVIDIA. So if it, it is capable of using the GPU for viewport playback, then it would have been apparent here. So now side by side, you could kind of see at the bottom of the screen there that it's just able to run through the viewport faster than the other one is um, compared to the left to the right, the M1 to the AMD. And so really just smooth playback in the fluid performance just using CPU. This next test is pretty much the same, a fluid bake test which checks out how the speed goes. Um, so same setup, left versus right, M1 versus AMD, and everything is synced by frame by when the clicked button was hit. 
So let's just skip right ahead to the end and the results and actually quite interesting findings. So what I was expecting to happen was that the M1 would follow up and have just absolutely dominant results. But then I saw here that, wait, what the fuck is going on? Four minutes and it's still going. And actually during this first test, when I was doing it on the same methodology, it actually goes all the way to six minutes, almost double the time. And I thought to myself, this can't be right. And so I thought back, I'm going to do like a little science experiment teaching lesson for you. Um, you know, you can't base everything off one result. And kind of from my time at uh, Georgia Tech Engineering School, I thought like, what, what could have been wrong? And it was actually my methodology where on the AMD, if you guys recall, I did the NVIDIA for recording, but then on the Mac, I did the X264, which is a CPU process. So I went ahead, recorded, and did all this stuff again. Took so much time editing back in to do QuickTime, because I'm pretty sure QuickTime is better. And guys, this is just even more crazier results. So with my updated methodology, it actually turns out that QuickTime encoding has less impact on CPU and actually crushes the render test at four minutes. Now, if we go back and look, that was eight minutes. So it's actually double the speed. Before I thought it was a close race. It's not even close. It crushes this at almost double the time CPU efficiency. If you thought AMD Ryzen was good, this is absolutely crushing it on the native 2.93 release candidate. So this is just bonker results. This is getting me hyped. If you guys don't have this machine yet, get your hands on it. Let's go. Putting the hype factor down for a second, we still have more tests to do. So this is on the new QuickTime one compared to the old G15, which doesn't need a retest because there is nothing impacting the CPU speed. And we're going to go ahead and see what the end results are for this test, which is the first half of the lava test. So now skipping ahead to this retest, we actually get better times, which is three minutes and 56 seconds. But the AMD from the last test, um, basically the same first test, did perform a little bit better, six seconds faster. But I would say it was neck and neck. And of course, um, still the Apple in the corner of Apple is uh, no feeds, feed spans, fan speeds uh, were noticed during this test. All right, guys, I've literally been, since I had to do the retest, kind of doing this in post. It takes a while to do these timing things, so I'm actually losing some steam. I got to go back to Atlanta, go to the World Series game. Let's go, Braves. But I just wanted to end this test. We got the second bake, which is the quick time, and we got the 5900. AMD. So once again, back to the king of doing it, beating it in half the time as well. So um, interesting to see that the second test, um, it was close and close, but the first test and the third test, um, you know, it's really showing its power. And I would even say even from the first test, getting half that speed, you're literally able to run both of these tests before the AMD one could even get here. So, uh, Last but not least, I got to show you the FPS. I'm ready to go to Atlanta. I'm ready to go to the battery, uh, but I just wanted to show you guys these results. FPS really choppy around when this liquid blows up, uh, but smooth otherwise. Um, so you get about four frames per second. This is the AMD one. And if I did my timings right on my edits after showing this two times, it's going to go to the A ah, can't speak the Apple M1. So this one's smooth. Let's see if we have choppiness on the explosion. Here it comes. Oh, it's still kind of choppy, but a little bit better at 6 FPS. Um, so definitely, I think there's just going to be an improvement when this gets to use GPU. So anyways, if you've made it through this whole video somehow and you've put up, uh, it, it really had us in the first half. But I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully someone got something out of this video. Even if it's like, hey, don't give up. Even if you messed up your first test, you could still save stuff somehow. There's multiple ways you could take from this video. Um, you know, why is this guy making so much content with no subs or little subs? Like, who gives a fuck? Uh, just a little bit of life motivation for you guys. On a Friday, we're turning up. So, um... Halloween's coming 
I'm sure everyone's going to be Squid Game. <laughs> I'm just rambling at this point. So whatever it is that you guys got from this video, whether it's you want to get an AMD or you want to get the M1, there's always these trade-offs. Um, hopefully everyone makes informed decisions. And uh, I think it's important to show, you know, methodology and research and process, right? Um, you know, before I thought I could do OBS, but I might have to tweak my future videos because that's a significant CPU impact. So just keep that in mind. If you're a YouTuber, or aspiring YouTuber, or you want to make content or you want to stream or you want to do whatever the fuck you want to do, um, it's going to be a process. You might be doing the wrong things at first. Enough life to talks, life coaching, positive mental attitude. I've been reading some of these comments out there. People are putting some whack stuff about like, I don't even know. You might as well just have a positive attitude. Like, subscribe or not, whatever you do. Have fun in life. Take care.